Hey everyone. Okay, so this is video two. You might have noticed that the first video kind of abruptly ended. Okay, we called this F1 and F2. And we noticed that F1 is acting at this point, let's call it point A, and F2 is acting at point B. And they're acting along the same line. So first, are they point loads? Yes, they are, because they're both acting at a certain point. And if they're point loads, it means that they're also concentrated loads, because concentrated loads are points that forces that act at a certain point. The next thing I, I meant to went on to is I said, are they concurrent forces? And I ended it by saying no, but then you heard that I hesitated. So let's think about it. We know that when there are only concurrent forces acting, there can only be, only be translational motion, no rotational motion. So let's take a little bit closer at this. F1 is acting here, F2 is acting here. If they are both pulling this, which way is the resultant force of this gonna go? It's either gonna go down if F1 is larger, or it'll go up if F2 is larger, which means it is only going in a translational direction. And remember there are times where you said, can we move the forces along a line? And you can, right? So if I had something where there was a normal and the normal is pushing towards a body, you asked, well, can I just move the normal up? So it's pulling the body in the same direction, but coming off a different point. And I said, you can. Well, that's the same thing with this. Yes, these two are concurrent forces because you could move F1 up to here or you could move F2 down to here. The net effect on this system is that it's going to be pulled down here or pulled down there, and it's only going to be translational motion. Okay, so we first looked at um, this situation, a similar situation. These are concurrent forces because all these forces are acting at a certain point. They're point loads, they're concentrated loads and their concurrent forces. Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce another. Let's take a look at this. In this situation, I have F1, F2, F3, and F4, which means they all have different magnitudes and they're all being applied at a point along a beam. So in this particular case, is let's see, so we have F1 or F1, we have F2, we have F3 and F4. Are they all point loads? Yes, they're all point loads. Yes. Are they concentrated loads? Yes. Are they concurrent loads? No. How come they're not all acting at the same point? Even if we pull this down and have this down, in the end, maybe two of them are acting at the same point, but certainly not all four together. The other thing, now we're introducing a new term called coplanar. And coplanar forces are forces acting on the same plane. Coplanar, forces that are acting on the same plane. All F1, F2, and F3, and F4 are all acting on the same plane. Let's take a look, lying on the same plane rather. I should say lying. Lying on the same plane. Let's take a look at our concurrent forces. Are all these lying on the same plane? Yes. When we looked at the, the car, are these two lying on the same plane? Yes. Okay. 
So forces that are point loads or concentrated loads or current concurrent forces can be coplanar. How about another definition? Let's take a look at this. This one is introducing what's referred to as parallel forces. And it's hard for you to see in the copy, but if you look close, this says F4, F5, F6, F2, and F3. So all these F1 through F6, they are all point loads. They are all concentrated loads. Are they concurrent? Are they all acting at the same point? No. Are they coplanar? Oops, sorry, you can't see what I'm writing. Are they coplanar? Are they lying in the same plane? No, they're not coplanar. They're parallel forces because the forces are indeed parallel to each other. They're all acting on the same plane but they're not lying in the same plane. And I wanna repeat that just to make sure that you're clear. Coplanar means forces that are lying on the same plane. So if I have a whole bunch of forces like this and they're all lying on my piece of paper, they are all lying on the same plane and therefore they're called coplanar, lying on the same plane. These are acting on the same plane but they're not coplanar because coplanar means they're lying on the same plane. Okay. Next type of for next uh, type of forces are called distributed loads. And those of you who came from materials, you might have had some kind of area. Let's just call it a area, and you had a force distributed over that area. So this together was a force and it was distributed over the area. What you may have learned in materials that this is called stress. Stress is the force over an area. And so the units, an example of the units would be pounds per square foot, could be pounds per square inch, it could be Newton meter squared, Newton per meter squared. So what we're doing is we're taking a force and we're distributing it over an area. So in what we see in statics though, more often of forces, they're not distributed over an area, but instead they're distributed over a length. So this is when forces are distributed over an area and this is when forces are distributed over a length. So notice here, we have a beam and we have a load that's distributed over the beam. And typically there is a horizontal line right here connecting these. And let me draw it myself. The force is distributed over a length, so here's some beam. And the way we represent this force is we don't represent it as stress because stress is over area. We represent it as force over a length and it's usually represented by omega. So just to do a summary now, we have point loads, we have, which are the same as concentrated loads. We have concurrent forces or loads. We have collinear forces. We have coplanar forces. And then the last one we're looking at is distributed forces. So these are the five different types of forces that we're gonna be seeing in our statics class. Point load, concentrated, concurrent, collinear, coplanar, and distributed forces. Okay, all right, thanks.